Springboard Roadshow Foundation. Legacy and Legacy. Be inspired. Be motivated. Be challenged. The main theme is going global. But I'm telling you, it takes more. And it starts from your mind. And so my sub-theme is the infinite journey. Americans will say infinite. The infinite journey from conforming to transforming. In music, I love music. I listen to music. I play music. Um, if my wife will ever leave me, it is because of music. Because at 4 a.m. she will hear King Kong, 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 I dang, wonder. But there's some, a word in music. It's called transpose. As you play in one key, there's a point, as you write songs, there's a point where the song begins to demand a movement, a motion that will not fit within that key. And so you move it a key higher, maybe a tone higher, a semitone higher, and it just lifts the song. Transpose. It means to be transfigured, to change markedly in your nature, appearance, form. Your function, your shape, your disposition, your condition, your character. It means to convert. Now you know what re means? Again. In fact, it means again and again. It indicates repetition. For example, the word regenerate means that it had been generated and there is the need for it to be generated again and again. You can look at words like refurbish, retype, retrace, revert. It connotes repetition. The second word is the word new, N-E-W. It means original, fresh, latest, up to the minute, recent, modern, additional, extra, further, different, spanking, newborn. And this is the one I love. In mint condition. And so when we say renew, we are talking about doing something to return it to an original state. Which means that the original mind you were given was perfect. But you got to work it. So to renew your mind means to refurbish your mind. To repair it. To restore it. To replenish. To revamp. To restart recommence, rekindle, regenerate, revitalize, rejuvenate, refresh, recharge, and revive. If you can't do this to your mind, you are not moving from conforming to transforming. Clearly, the mind then renews itself by simply doing again and again what it was created to do. And what is that? Think. 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 The mind is like the dynamo. It generates power by its own motion. Dynamo is derived from the word dunamis, which means strength, power, ability, inherent power, power residing in a thing by, nat by virtue of its nature. So God created your mind to think. And the more you work it with an, along its original plan, the newer it, beca it, be it becomes. So your brain becomes new by use. If you do not use it, it ossifies, atrophy. Which means that you must actively and skillfully conceptualize issues, apply them, analyze, synthesize, evaluate information. You're given information in class and you just read it and reproduce it at the end of the year and walk out. What does it mean? We all went to school. I, I loved history. Many of us read about Ghana, the old Ghana empire. What's the meaning of the word Ghana? At, at the time you studied ancient Ghana, Mali, Songhai, did you ever ask, 
Ah, how did we become known as Ghana? Now, Ghana, what is the name? Is it a tree word or a fancy word or ever word? But what does Ghana mean? Yes, sir, you. The warrior king. Warrior. A mighty warrior. Oh, my word. Talk about a people living the opposite of the meaning of their name. But we are warriors. You know the kind of warrior we are? The people who worry. We live on our knees as if we are not named to be warriors. Why? Because many of us never thought about it. Ghana cry, nothing is saying. Thinking. Look, everyone thinks. It is in our nature to think. But much of our thinking left to itself may be biased, distorted, partial, uninformed, or sometimes downright prejudiced. The racist person is an uninformed person. The tribalistic person is a person whose mind is not working properly. I said it. I said it. The quality of our life and the quality of the things we produce, make or build depends on the quality of our thinking. Let me give an example. You want to build a house. And so you sit down and take your own pen and paper and draw your squares and give it to, uh, I like the word brecher, to build. That's the quality. Or you go to an architect who sits down and based on the quality of that architect's thinking, that's why there's a difference between one architect and the other. There's a difference between one lawyer and the other. It is the quality of the person's thinking. Designs a beautiful place for you to live. What you live in is the result of your thinking. What you are is the result of what you think. Excellent thinking must be systematically cultivated. It doesn't just happen. Four things. One, raise vital questions and problems. I like the example of the water closet. I, it's a very crude and in your face example. I believe that in the country of Mr. Shank, you know you call it Shank, it's the name of the person who designed the toilet bowl, Mr. Shank. I believe that his forefathers also did it in the earth and covered it. But he sat down and said, why must we continue to do things the same way? Everybody didn't think it was a problem. He thought it was a problem. And so he designed the water closet so that water would take the thing away. And Mr. Shank made money for his, himself and his generation. And we all know the word Shank. Because he thought about some of the basic things. So one, raise vital questions. Two, gather and assess relevant information. Because trust me, there's nothing new under the sun. Everything that is, has been. What you can do is to develop from what is there. Three, then think open-mindedly. Assess assumptions, implications, consequences. There's a thinking part of thinking. And then four, communicate or apply effectively. That leads to quality thinking. So the thinking doesn't kick in till the third phase. But altogether, it forms what is called excellent thinking. Create thinking time. Ask questions. What? Who? Why? Where? How? When? Which? There's nothing wrong with answering questions. Create time where you ask questions. And Albert talked about the talkative uh, child. This is a society that thumbs down on children who ask questions. We are not saying that kids should be rude. But, ladies and gentlemen, if I had listened to all the shut up that I heard as a child, they didn't say keep quiet. Oh. Shut up the criticism. 
And especially when you belong to the church and uh, you are SU some way. SU means you must become conforming. Then you get this skinny boy up here with his gangly frame and he's always talking. What that talking child needs is guidance, not shouting at. Because as I found out, talking can look after you. And someone will pay for your talking. But what is talking? It's talking. It's just talking. But if properly constructed, somebody will sit down and pay you to talk. And that talking will put food on your table, clothes on your back, a roof over your head, money in your pocket, and send your children to school. Talking. Just talking. Look. Our minds must begin a process of engagement that leads the mind to renew itself. Getting anew again and again to meet and address our challenges. Discarding the old and no longer relevant. It is an endless journey from being conformed to the state of being transformed. It is brain over brawn. It is mind over matter. The world isn't waiting for us. One of my most favorite musicians, John Legend, says... The future began yesterday and we are already late. That journey doesn't end. In fact, the journey is the destination. As I discussed with one of my daughters, she referred me to a statement. It says, the illiterates of the 21st century will not be those who cannot read or write, but those who cannot learn and learn and relearn. A statement by Alvin Toffler. The quality of our thinking affects one thing. Our attitude, our approach, outlook, stance, position, thought, mindset, way of thinking, point of view, viewpoint, standpoint, posture, our attitude. And you know, we don't have to reinvent the wheel. Others have done it. We can borrow, we can adapt. We... Look, Japan was decimated after Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Atomic bombs were released on them. They died. For years it was occupied by foreign troops. But Japan today is still Japan. The Japanese haven't changed. They speak their language. They still bow. They still have their cultures. But they learned from their occupiers and are now almost beating their occupiers in economics. The Americans occupied and the Europeans occupied Japan. And the Japanese studied them and said these things are good about them. They took them and the Japanese economy is stronger than every, every European economy. They learned from their occupiers. Uh, what did we learn from the British? English. And then what? <laughs> Oh my word, I need time. Look, Japan is, I hear, 80% mountainous and suitable for agriculture or farming. Yet, it's in the top two strongest economies. It is effectively a floating factory. It imports everything and then makes the cars and exports it to us. Oh, yeah, a whole. These are the things that break my heart. The, the difference between us is not a matter of which country is older and which country is younger. Say, so, oh, Ghana is only 50 years. You are demanding too much of us. Look, India is 2,000 years old. So is Egypt. In fact, one of the oldest republics in the world is Ethiopia. So is it about age? And some of the youngest countries in the world, Ethiopia was a member of the League of Nations and a founding member of the United Nations. So it's not about age. Countries like Canada, New Zealand, Australia are just about 150 years old. Can you compare? In fact, Australia and New Zealand were penal colonies. The prisoners who they didn't like in England were sent to live there. Can you compare? Canada was described as a block of floating ice. Can you compare? 
It is also not in the availability or unavailability of natural resources. And let me tell you, I just hate this. When you say, hey, in Ghana, we have cocoa, and we have gold, and we have bauxite, and so what? A day that broke my heart. My first ever trip to Geneva. And as I, at the last day, I decided to buy chocolates for my office and home. And I walked into a shop. And my heart broke. Oh my word. Chocolate. Different kinds. On a wall like the length of this room. Every foot is a different kind of chocolate. And I asked, where is the cocoa tree in Switzerland? The nearest cocoa tree to Switzerland is found in the Ashanti region of Ghana. A distance of 7,327.1 kilometers. And so our cocoa goes to produce it. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you, I said, chocolate is what? One with mango, one with berries, one with whiskey, one with that. And I think about Ghana and I can remember golden tree. You know, pebbles, when we're children, we used to eat it. It will color your mouth. Today, it still colors your mouth. It is as hard as its name. <laughs> David would have killed Goliath faster if he had used pebbles, made in Ghana pebbles. I know I'll get into trouble for this. I hope my voice gets into trouble. <laughs> it is not about our race or our color. The only difference between me and the Caucasian is that God blessed me with more melanin. That's all. Because he knew I'd live in Africa. So he needed to protect me from getting skin cancer from the sun. That's all. How that can transmute into our state of mind is shocking. It's shocking. Yet, the same people go elsewhere and achieve. Look at the list of the top 100 people of color in England, the United Kingdom. It sounds like a list of names from Lagos. Um, I didn't find a Ghanaian name though. It's like they copied the name from Lagos. Right now, the two leading colored politicians that are being talked about mostly in the UK as possibly prime, as, as the possible prime ministers are called Adam Efriye, 47, Conservative MP for Windsor, and Chuka Umuna, 33 Labour MP for Streatham. Right? The name Efriye, is it similar? Uh, it comes from somewhere in the middle of Ghana, right? And as for Chuka Umuna, it is straight out of Oka, Anambra State. The same people. Let's do a fact chat about Ghana. The thinking, the conformed thinking we have to move away from. Number one, myopia. Short-sightedness. Myopia. We don't see beyond our noses. That is conformed thinking. It is very common here. We need to renew our minds. Think bigger. Ask better questions. Think of yourself larger than you can see. Where are you going from here? In the next three years, we are too short-sighted as a people, not all of us, but for the most part. That conformed thinking has to change. Number two, ignorance. I call it the arrogance of ignorance. A Ghanaian will mount a platform and make a statement and then after he has finished, he says, I stand to be corrected. You know that you don't know, but you are advocating your ignorance. We have to beat the arrogance of ignorance. Three, complacency. Lack of punctuality. These are things we are going to have to break if we want to go global. The mind has to go beyond this. Four, lack of respect for law and order. People are praised for breaking the law. I like one. You see, my, one of my first trips somewhere, a friend of mine, Ken Barnes, took me to Los Angeles. He said we should go and look at uh, where the film stars live. And you know this Ghana man, me, the road was there. We needed to go over to the other side. I tried to walk. He grabbed and pulled me back and said, hey, $75. If you walk on the street, $75. Huh. 
The, the, the police will catch you there and then you will pay. So you will have to walk all the way to the traffic light and wait for green. And it will time us as we walk. Now if you think of $75, hey, and one highway. <laughs> oh God have mercy. Education. One of the things we have to look at. We are still living and sleeping in darkness and have basic problems like water. When we have had universities training engineers for 50 years. I, Albert, don't invite me again because I'm sure they'll say I came and insulted Ghana. We have been training civil engineers for all of these years and we don't have bridges. Albert, there are bridges I drive on somewhere and my heart, as they say, my heart caught. The Verrazano Bridge, the Delaware Memorial, these bridges are high. Some saw mountains and saw that mountains are challenges to be broken. Others saw mountains and worshipped them as gods. Basic respect for each other. Number six. Basic respect for each other. I sit with a, my, my doctor. He's my brother-in-law. And he's examining me. And he tells me everything he's doing. He takes a hammer and hits my knee. Before he does that, he explains why he's doing it. He's duty-bound to do it. Dare ask the nurse in Ghana why she's giving you that in injection. You dare. Or dare ask your lawyer, why did you not show up in court? Or dare ask the church nearby why they are making noise. Albert won't call me again. Seven, we have an entitlement mentality. That is the entitlement mentality that makes the policeman standing at the barrier knock on your window and say, bring your window down. You think you've done something wrong. Then he says, Daddy, your children are here. It is a cold night, sir. We are here. You see, this corruption thing isn't going anywhere. Because we have both a, an entitlement or beggar mentality and a patron mentality. You also feel the need to give. Eight, mediocrity. Glorifying the average the ordinary, the run of the mill, the pedestrian. We are so mediocre sometimes that we cheer when the lights come on. Are you here? Are you confirming this? Do I have witnesses? When the lights come on, you cheer. Now I lived somewhere for a year where the lights only went off for an hour and they gave us about a month's notice. That on that day, we are going to do this work and the lights will go off for an hour. Oh my word. Nine, superstition. And here I speak to the religious folk. Let's get this right. God answers prayer and is in the miracle business, but he is not in the magic business. If you don't learn, you will fail. Period. The Holy Spirit or God won't come and cheat in the exam room and bring you something you haven't learned. It doesn't happen. It does not happen. Because he says, let him who will not work, not eat. He says, I will bless the work of your hands. So if your hand is not doing any work, what is he blessing? Look, blessing is a multiplier. It multiplies what you have. So if you have zero and God blesses you a thousand times, what do you get? Thank you. That's why we are where we are. Look, calling a prayer meeting and a fasting time over a failing airline. If you don't, you haven't put in place a structure to redeem the airline. And instead of the, looking at the economies of the, and doing the things that is done to save the airline, while some airlines are existing, you have a prayer meeting. Guess what? The airline collapsed. And guess what? Its successor also collapsed. And I hear that we are planning another one. It will also collapse if all we do is say that when it's about to collapse, let's pray. As if God is a spare time. That is some of the conformed thinking that has got to be renewed into transformed thinking. Are you here? Oh, and our love for holidays. 365 days in a year. 104 are weekends. And if you work, you have another 20 
as your annual leave, sleep time. And then there are about 13 to 14 public holidays. Eight is a third of 24. So you've been sleeping for eight hours every day of your life. You have slept away a third of your life. Think about it. And you work for another eight. And then you gossip and sit in traffic and do your hair and cut your nails for another eight hours. And you wonder why we are not making it. We are on holiday for more than eight, two thirds of the year. Eleven, timidity. But a judge said that it is shaped by bold spirits and not timorous souls. It is disguised as famanyami. Now guess what? The one who says famanyami is not the one going through the situation. It is usually a nosy third party who tells you that famanyami or jaimonka 12 politics that's another topic but my view of it is summarizing pastor tabel's sermon that our vote is on autopilot go and find that sermon but that sermon let me end there are some statements we should get out of like country broco country no broco we day inside but if you day inside country broke you are broke and since you can't ever be richer than your country, you are broker than broke. In fact, you are so poor that the poor should laugh at you. Another one. Ah, if UAC manager has incurred, incurred a debt, what does it matter to me, the UAC watchman? If the UAC manager incurs a debt and UAC collapses, you won't have a job as a watchman tomorrow. Think beyond the obvious. Last one. And it's best reflected in Fanti. In other words, a job with the government is to be dragged on the ground and not carried on the head. That is where we are, where we are after 50 years. Not that we can't feed ourselves. We can't even find water to drink. We, we import onions from Niger. Yes. It is possible the onion, the onion you had in your egg this morning or in your pepper that you ate the kinky with this morning came from Niger. Desert. And tomatoes. Oh Lord have mercy. And we have the, we have, of course, we have what the Volta Lake and Afram Plains. And we import food. God have mercy on us. Let me tell you what. Things are not getting better. And unless we become a generation of thinkers and achievers, we'll be lost forever. I like the story of the prodigal son in the Holy Writ. It says that he came to himself. It means he began to think. Then he realized one thing. I am living like a pig. I am eating like a pig. I am beginning to sound like a pig. In fact, in all probability, I'm beginning to look like a pig. And then he compared that situation to the situation in his father's house and made a decision that changed his life. Ghana, we are going to have to come to that decision point where we become a generation of people who will think to solve our problems. It is not coming from anywhere. If you have a beggar mentality, you are treated like a beggar. That is why you go begging nations for money. The Indians built your presidential palace. The Chinese built your ministry of foreign affairs. The Chinese built your ministry of defense. Three sensitive places built for you by foreigners and you say we are a proud people. God have mercy. We are a nation of warriors. You are a warrior. That is what we are supposed to be. That is your name. Are you here with me? Robert Marley says, none but ourselves can free our own minds. Lee Kuan Yew spoke about Africa and he says that from Africa must come a new generation of leaders committed to reform tapping the same spirit that brought freedom 30 years ago at the time. Angered by the failures of corrupt and autocratic leaders, frustrated by economic policies that did not deliver, impatient to recover their lost civil rights, and worn out by wars. Africa's people deserve a fresh start. And it starts from you and I beginning to think. You cannot change what you are satisfied with. 
And if all I do today is to challenge you to become dissatisfied with your situation and achieve my purpose for coming here, we cannot go global with the way we operate. We will remain local. But I end with the words of Osibisa. Easily the most accomplished band in Ghana's history because they were transforming thinkers. They realized that our basic music, our efritua and the tumpang, wouldn't sell. And they also know, knew they couldn't play jazz better than the white man or the westerner. So they blended the two into Afro rock, brought in people from West Indies, from Nigeria, and formed a band that hit the Billboard charts. They toured the world to huge stadia filled with people. And they played a song called Wayaya. And there's a phrase in it I like. Most of you know it as we are going. That's not a title. The title is Wayaya. And there's a phrase in it. They say, it will be hard. We know. And the road will be muddy and rough. But we will get there. But we will get there. There's an African proverb that a man has to hold his mouth open for a long time before a roasted partridge flies into it. We will get there. We will get there. The road is going to be muddy and rough. It will be hard. But we will get there. We need to move from conforming to transforming. And it is only the renewed mind that can get us there. Thank you and God bless you.